be nice to well, me. Well, that, that was quite an introduction. <laughs> As I always say, uh, I don't, uh, I appreciate the negative attention. I've been ignored so long, yeah. I'll take anything. <laughs> it's great to be here. Are you glad to be here in church? Well, I'm going to give away a few things. Uh, I've got a book for you, but now we're going to test this book on you, if you don't mind. Uh, and we may do this tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's got a QR code, and it's something that I wrote for people who get born again. It's, it's called, as I said, Prepare to Meet Your Maker. And it talks about salvation, four steps to prepare uh, people for eternity. And um, we we designed it originally for people who would come to the altar to get born again, and rather than fill out paper, they just QR code the, uh, you know, scan the QR code with their phones. Isn't that a modern way to have an altar service? And then they give their information and they download the book, and so they have that prayer. That's it. Just explains to them what happened to them as they got born again. It's not good to just have a new convert and send them off on their way without knowing what happened to them and uh, and so anyway that's what that's for and we'll we'll do that later but i have i did bring these in my suitcase these are usbs how many of you can use a usb you you know how to use you you know actually back home we still sell half uh cds or more cds than anything and uh, i don't know why because i don't even have a cd player i don't know where you get a cd player Amazon, maybe. <laughs> and, and, and now, and li it's like a cassette player. I wouldn't know where you would get that. But anyway, these are USBs, and, and these are all bundles. I brought a lot of information in a small package. Uh, this one's called A Fresh Look at the New Creation, and it's 20 episodes of my TV program in audio and video. So you, you put it in your car, you can hear the audio. If you put it in your smart TV... It'll be MP4s, it's video, and you can watch all 20 of those uh, episodes. And then there's another series, an audio-only series called Who Do You Think You Are, which is about the new creation. It's a five-message series. It's on there. Those are like 50-minute messages. And then the notes, for the study notes for uh, a fresh look at the new creation, the first 20 messages, it has study notes, and people are using these for Bible studies. They can show the video and they have notes to go with it. And so that may be something you're interested in. But these, um, uh, we, we did the price. We normally sell them for 30 U.S. dollars, but we're going to sell them here for 20 uh, pounds. Or if you want to pay 20 U.S. dollars, we'll take that too. Or if you want to pay in gold, you could do that. Uh, so, but anyway, that, that's this one. I just want to explain it because we brought these and they're on the table out there. Who would like to have this and you have a U.S. You know that USB port in your car is not just for charging your phone. <laughs> you can actually play uh, video, uh, audio through that. Would you like this? All right, I'm going to give that to you. And then this one, I, I'm really excited about this one. It's called Dare to Believe. 20 sessions, audio and video of my TV program called Dare to Believe. It's that series plus the study notes. And then a five-message audio series entitled Understanding Faith. And I spent a year going back through the message of faith and studying faith. And this is one of those series that came out of it. It's called Understanding Faith. And it talks about the nuts and bolts of faith. And let me just say this. A lot of people are ready to pray. But not as many people are ready to believe they receive when they pray. And that's really the key to receiving the answer to your prayer. It's, it's easy to say, I want to pray and pray, but you've got to prepare sometimes to believe you receive when you pray. Because that's where the fight begins. And so a lot of people miss their answer because they're ready to pray, but they're not ready to believe they receive. They just want to see it. And so uh, anyway, we get into the real nuts and bolts of faith uh, as I studied the subject of faith, which we're very familiar with, I just I realized I didn't have it organized very well. And so I split it up into three different categories. And one is how faith comes. Two is what faith is. And that's what this series is, is what faith is. 
And number three is how to release your faith, which is a, a series coming out called um, The Key to Answered Prayer. And it talks about how to believe you receive and how to conf- and the truth about confession and how important that is. So anyway, uh, this really is a great overview of the subject of faith. And it's out there. This one also is $20. Would you like this one? Can, I'm going to throw it to you. If you can. Oh. I apologize. That actually came out pretty well. I, I wouldn't have done that with a CD series. but. And then this one, if, if you need healing, uh, this one is, he, is healing God's will for you. Again, 20 sessions of my TV shows. Oh, those are 30-minute sessions. There's 20 of those. Audio and video, study notes, plus an audio series called Healing for All. Uh, four messages there. So there's hours and hours of teaching on here. And uh, and if you yeah, if really one of the keys to healing, if you're struggling with healing, just back off. Don't rush it. Just feed on healing scriptures. Just feed on healing teaching. You know, Brother Hagen said this and uh, and and it really impacted me and I've started doing it. Uh, not as faithfully maybe as he did, but you know, Brother Hagen, Kenneth Hagen was raised up from a deathbed. He was supposed to die as a 16-year-old, and when he was 17, he believed he received, and God healed him. And he went and preached faith for the rest of his life. He said this, he said it several times, he said, for 30 years, I never went to bed at night without reading something that fed my faith on faith and healing. For 30 years. Now he wrote the book on faith and healing. And yet he fed on that. Every night. Like he didn't know what, anything about it. He fed on it. And his faith was strong in that area. And so it's very uh, important that we do that. Because you're going to need your faith to be strong. In the area of healing. And um, and he believed God. You know he had to continue to believe God. So, um, so those things are out there for you. Uh, and there'll be someone to help you. We, we've got credit card forms you can fill out. Or you can do the 20 pounds uh, cash. I want to talk about something tonight a little different than this morning. Uh, but I believe it's along the same lines. Why don't you do this? Um, let's stand up together. And Chris, I like the shirt. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> we, we have to compliment one another's shirts. Uh, uh. And uh, and the music, thank you for being here and being so happy. <laughs> Talking about joy. Uh, so so I appreciate the invitation and and it's so much fun to s- to, to to just join in here and that that message today. I mean, it's classic on a rhetorical question. Have you ever heard such a <laughs> definition? That was amazing. And it, you, uh, Amanda sent my wife to YouTube. But you know, of course, not of me, but of Ben, and <laughs> um, and she, uh, but she, she was she was watching the end of it, and she says, "Yeah, it was on the love of God, not being separated from." The l-. I said, "No, <laughs> it was about the rhetorical question. You've got to get that. It's a question. I got to define this that you ask not for an answer, but to make a point." I would never have been able to define it that simply, but that, and then to to use Romans eight for that. Can I use that? Wow, I loved it. I loved it. Anyway, I, I get blessed when I come here. Let's pray. Uh, 20 pounds. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> man, you, you got somebody that's got your back over here. Man. I don't want to mess with these two. Whew. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word. Speak to us tonight. Help us to make choices, decisions that would be life-changing. I pray that the Holy Spirit would take the words that I speak and, and, and illuminate them and cause them to be as good seeds planted in the soil of our hearts that we will not just be forgetful hearers of this word, but we will be doers of it and it will change our life. And we give you the praise and honor and glory for all that you uh, are doing and we'll do in this service, and we thank you, Father, for setting people free tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. And I'm going to f- make this statement again and then take you to several scriptures. And that is this. Satan cannot destroy your life, if you're a Christian, without your cooperation. 
That is a loaded statement because speaking of, and Ben and I do a lot of this, <clears throat> we talk about personal responsibility. Uh, gr the grace of God is very real, and we've all been hopefully educated in that topic and subject, but there are things that if you don't do for yourself, you won't experience uh, God's grace in your life because there, it'll be cut off. And, uh, and so uh, let me just give you these, these few scriptures and then we'll make a statement. First John 5.18 says this, For we know, everybody say we know, that whatever or whoever is born of God does not sin. We don't make sin. How many of you are born again? And, and, and you don't want to have a habit or make a habit out of sin or sinning. And so um, and, and one translation says we don't habitually sin. Uh, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. I, that scripture has just exploded in my spirit of late. The, if, if he that is born of God does not sin, we're not out looking to sin. We don't make provision for the flesh or we shouldn't be. And in other words, this is really conditional. You could reverse this and say, what if someone is born of God and they do make a habit of sinning and they don't keep themselves or that word keeps himself means guard yourself. So a person, a Christian who's born again, we, we know the scriptures. We know that we've been delivered from the power of darkness, don't we? We know that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. We know for that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So we know all that. We know Luke ten nineteen that he's given us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. We know those verses. But if you take 1 John 5, 18 and turn it around and say, uh, we're born of God, but we sin constantly and we don't guard ourselves, then the wicked one can touch you. And w what I want to deal with is Christians around the world that are dealing with destruction in their life. They're dealing with problems in their life that are direct uh, result of the fact that they haven't done what they needed to do to keep the devil off their back. Or we put up with too much. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to explain this more. It's not condemning, but it is empowering to know that we can do something about our lives. That we have something to say about what goes on in our world. And, and we can live in a place where we can say, you, Satan, cannot touch me. You can't touch me. You can't get your hands on me. You can't make me sick or poor or sad. You don't have any power over me in Jesus' name. And how many of you know not every Christian can say that? I mean, they can say it, but in practice, they're not experiencing that. Well, I've had, I've had enough. Let's live up to that level. Let's be untouchable. Let's live in this world where, where Satan cringes every time we get out of bed. That he can't touch us. He can't manipulate us. He can't seduce us. He can't make us sick. He can't depress us. He, can't, he has no power over our lives. How many of you believe Jesus lived that way? Certainly he did because he said this in John 14, 30. This verse will take on new meaning. He says in John 14, 30, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. The goal here is that every single person in this room tonight leaves here saying that same thing. He has nothing. Jesus was so confident. He said, the, we've got to have that confidence, folks. We need to walk in that kind of authority and that the world needs you to be free. Your family needs for you to be free. This generation needs for us to be free and be able to say with Jesus, the prince of this world comes, but he has nothing in me. And, that, and, and, and the Amplified says, he has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. He has no power over me. Don't you love that? That is true, can be true about us. 
And in verse, uh, the, the, the Passion Translation says, He has no power over me. He has nothing to use against me. Can't use anything against me. Boy, if he can, he will. And you can compromise your own authority by the choices you make when no one's looking. You can compromise your own authority by yielding to his uh, temptations, seduction, his way of thinking, his, uh, th and there are so many areas to do this. But, but thank God we have the authority in our lives to say no. Let me give you a couple more scriptures. 1 Peter 5.8, which is, is um, it really does say the same thing. Let me turn there real quick, or does he have that? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So, so and, and then read the next verse, in verse 9, if you can. Resist him steadfast in the faith. It didn't say, no matter what you do, you have victory over the devil. You can live however you want, and, you, and you're just going to be free. He can't do it. No, that, that's not what it said. It said just the opposite. Be sober. So we could turn that one around. If you're not sober, and if you're not vigilant, and if you don't resist him, I mean, notice this. He, he, is, he is seeking those he can devour. He can't devour everyone. He can't touch everyone. He doesn't have, have entrance into everyone's life. But some people he does. And, and they decide that. So if you could see him as a roaring lion, he's looking for a weakness in your life. He's looking for a door. He's looking for a way to affect you, to afflict you to oppress you, to depress you. Are you, are you listening to me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, I, uh, Ben knows, and Amanda, that, that I don't talk about the devil a lot. I, like, like you said, I, I, don't, I don't believe in the devil. I believe in a devil. But, but th there is a, a demonic kingdom set up here, and to deny that is to be naive. And I love to, to, to make this point to those people who, who religiously, non-religiously say, I just can't believe uh, that there's a God, a good God as you say, because there's so much evil in the world. And how, then they, and they ask, how can there be a good God when there's so much evil in the world? As if that excuses them for dealing with the subject of God. And it doesn't. I've got a good answer for that. How can there be a good God and there be so much evil in the world? Because there's a devil! That's easy! Because there's a devil. That'd be like saying, how could there be a, a, a devil when there's so much good in the world? Because there's a God. Amen. How can there be right when there's so much wrong? Because they're polar opposites. That's the way our world is built. It's it, the whole, the, uh, all of, of creation is set up with, with these polarized opposites. North Pole, how could there be a North Pole? Because there's a South Pole! <laughs> Do you understand how basic that is? There's a good God and a bad devil. And according to Peter, he's trying to find a weakness in every person in order to devour them. He wants to put as much oppression, pain, suffering on humanity as he can possibly get away with. That just makes me want to say no. I'm going to stand up and say no. And, and now we'll get into more of the details. But it's, it's so important to, to set this up right. So that you can make decisions today. That will, that will change your life. And you may say, well, I would never, ever let the devil push me around. Well, he doesn't come to you with a pitchfork and horns and say, I'm the devil and I'm going to intimidate you. That's not how he comes. And the same people that sing and, and praise God and they're all bold in church, they go home and they let depression push them around. They let loneliness bully them. That's the devil! 
They let greed overtake them and selfishness or envy or strife or lust or, or any of these things that can come in and they, they, they yield to that. And when they do, he takes advantage in that area. It's time to say enough is enough. The prince of this world comes. We have work to do. We need to be free. We need to be ready to fight. We, we need to close every door. We need to look behind every cabinet and, 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 and do some house cleaning and make sure that our lives are like the life of Jesus himself. That there is nowhere in my life that he can get a hold of me. There's nowhere he can take advantage of me. I live in my rights and privilege in, in Christ and I take my authority. Are you with me so far? Then uh, uh, another scripture, personal responsibility, Ephesians 4, 27, Paul says, nor give place to the devil. That is a loaded statement right there. What does that mean? Don't give place to the devil. That means you must be able to give place to the devil. He's talking to Christians. Ephesians were Christians. You can give the devil a place. And boy, in our permissive society, People want you to deny the Bible. They want you to accept new values. There are no new values. There's only true and lies. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, 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 tolerance with lies. You can just reform them and refit them every generation. But the truth does not change. And people want us to, to, to deny that certain things in the Bible are not necessarily for today. Society's progressed beyond that. And you can't just say that marriage is between a man and a woman. And who are you to, to stand in, be, be in front of love, true love? Are you going to get in the way of love? Who do you think you are? I, I'm, no, I'm nobody. I, I would never stand in the way of love. And as far as I'm concerned, you could date a tree. I don't care. You want to marry a tree? That's fine with me. But, but I, I'm a messenger. And I found in the Bible where God Almighty told us how to live life and what was right and what was wrong. And, and you're asking me, who a, a person who has lived for God his whole life and embraced the Bible as a whole, you're asking me to decide which truths or which scriptures are true and which are not true anymore. That's way above my pay grade. I'm just not in a position to do that. I'm sorry. I'm just going to take the whole thing and believe that God knew what he was writing and knew what he was talking about and that his, his, his values didn't go out of style. I'm just going to believe. I'm my, maybe I'm naive. I'm going to believe people are more stupid than God, that God still knows what he's talking about, that the world has lost its mind. I can't sit here and tell you that this scripture is not for today and this one is uh, that's that's not my job. My job is to preach the truth and read the Bible and believe it. Amen. So so we can give place to the devil, the, nor give place to the devil. So you can give place to the devil. And also, if you if the devil has a place in your life, and here we go, and this is so important, if he does have a place in your life, you gave it to him. And if he does have a place in your life and you gave it to him, you can take it away from him. That's pretty cool from just one little phrase and it don't give place to the devil. Okay, what are we going to do about that? Take it away. If it's there, take it away. Now, I'm not saying it is. And we're not going to go on a witch hunt. You understand? We're not going to look for devils behind every corner. But I tell you, it is valuable and important enough to talk about in a setting like this. I don't believe we're going to create a bunch of demon you know in fact we may talk about this tomorrow night again but we're not out looking for devils they they come at us we're the we're the undisputed heavyweight champions of the world we don't have anything to prove they they come at us and when they do we're ready the last thing we should do is compromise and give give audience to the the devil and yield to his temptations and if you're doing it all i'm saying is stop it's costing you way too much we're not getting away with it. You're, it, it, it's, it. Maybe no one knows, but if the enemy is taking advantage of you, let's just get rid of it. Devils are real. Um, let me just give you a couple scriptures that I uh, looked up along this line. 
um, Peter, uh, they brought they brought people to Peter so his shadow would pass over them. In verse uh, 16 of Acts 5, it says, and, and a multitude gathered from the surrounding areas to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were healed. Unclean spirits can torment people. They can make life miserable. They can, they can, they can cause uh, depression and darkness and emotional problems and physical problems when the gospel was preached and sicknesses and diseases were healed many cases in fact here in, in in acts 8 it says unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great joy in that city you remove the devils you remove the sickness and disease and there's great joy in the city don't make a deal with the devil He's out propagating sickness and disease and, and torment on people and Christians too if they'll let him. We, shouldn't, we should guard. That's what Peter said. And so I'm encouraging you to do what he said. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be watchful. Guard your life. You're responsible for it. No one else can guard your life. We, you, I'm sorry, but you can't just say, I'm, I'm dealing with the devil. I'm dealing with these issues. Fix me. Lay hands on me and fix me. You know what? If you're a Christian and you've been living for God, there are things that you can do to get relief yourself. You don't even need a preacher. You don't even need a prayer line to do it. You can do it yourself. And, and when in, even in Philip's case here in, in Acts 8, the, the gospel was preached and they believed the word uh, that was preached by Philip, the gospel. And that's when the unclean spirits left and sickness and disease left. What happened was they embraced the truth and at the same time they closed all these doors that they had had open to the evil one. And what's the, the result? He had to go. Isn't that amazing? He, he doesn't have power, but he'll take advantage of anyone that'll let him. They took aprons from Paul's body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. So they do respond to the anointing. They don't like it. Romans 13 is a great... Uh, uh, 13, 11 through 14 is a great word for us in these days. Paul said, do this knowing that the time, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. I guarantee you, Christians that are living in sin have opened themselves up to the devil and, and they are suffering because of it we, as ben was saying we, we're so focused on the fact that god loves us he does love you and and that and that god everything jesus did is free and we don't have to earn it that's right we don't but if you live in the in sin uh, you're opening a door to the devil god's not going to get you for it but the devil will i don't want to be god i don't want i don't want to to suffer uh, for 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 things that uh, that I could change that I don't have to that I don't have to put up with so it says therefore let us cast off the works of darkness let us put on the armor of light let us walk properly as in the day not in revelry and drunkenness not in lewdness and lust not in strife and envy and please take this in the spirit that it's given we live in a new and uh, a more intense time and and there are Christians that have coasted in their spiritual life and it's not going to work anymore. We live in a time where you've got to be on offense. You've got to be sober. You've got to be vigilant. You, you have to realize that the stakes are high right now. And we've seen uh, people, ministries and, and different ones pass off the scene and who knows why but i'll tell you if you'll be sober and vigilant if you'll give no place to the devil he can't touch you Amen. can't touch you Amen. and there is a boldness and an authority when you can say that and you mean it with all your heart i'm going to show you how to do that are you excited about this yeah. yeah we're not going to give you a test and say hey what are you dealing with <laughs> We're not going to do that, but, but, but we've got to identify what I just want to simply call open doors. 
doors that we've left open. And when you do that, you're going to have trouble. Now, you, you would, if, let's say this. Let's say an alcoholic or a drug addict that was, I mean, they'd been on drugs and alcohol, addicted for a long time. Their health is declining. They're, they don't have any possessions. They don't have any money. They, they, they're, they're not happy. They're sad. They're depressed. They, they don't have a home. And they come to you and they say, man, I need help. And, you know, if I just if I could just have a home if, if or a car, if you could just help me buy a car and some medication for my depression, maybe some counseling. I'm just so depressed. You go. You know, dummy, your your alcohol problem is causing all this. See, yeah, but I, I don't mind the alcohol. I just want I just don't want to be sad anymore. And I don't want to be broke anymore. And I want a home like everyone else. Well, you need to get rid of the alcohol. No, that's not the problem. It, it exactly is the problem. That door has let all these other things work in your life. And until you close that, I could just keep giving you money and you're going to get more depressed. And I think we do that spiritually sometimes. We're praying for people and praying for people and anointing them and anointing them and anointing them. And they're, and they're not getting help because they're trying to deal with depression. Well, they left a door open in their life. And, and that's why they're depressed or that's why they're sick. That's why they're dealing with these diseases. They don't just need healing. They need to shut the door. They're, they're, they may be lazy in their morals or lazy in some area of their life. And, and these are not secret sins. There's no such thing as a secret sin. I'm not trying to, to, to get you to make something up or, or, you know, tell me what I'm doing wrong. No, it's it, really to open the door to the devil. And maybe you need to write this down. It's, it's, be, it's persistent, willful disobedience. Are you with me? It's not something that you wouldn't be aware of. It's probably an area of your life where the Lord has dealt with you over and over again. And you go, it's not that big a deal. I'm not going to deal with that. I got bigger problems to deal with. And and so I'm just saying, deal with it. Deal with it. it. Doesn't take long. It's not a big thing. We don't need some kind of deliverance service where you have all kinds of manifesting. Just just recognize an open door and deal with it. open doors are a problem you know uh, and and that's really the the most important issue is to is to close is to identify these things and oh we we had a house one time that we had squirrels in the walls they would come in every night they were flying squirrels nocturnal and they'd come in about two o'clock in the morning land on the roof and they would go into the walls and they went up in between the walls into the floor in between my bedroom. They were in the floor of my bedroom. And I was beside myself. I was like, I am going to kill. <laughs> I'm going to kill these squirrels. I'm going to tear this house down. I'm going to burn it down. I'm going to get. N there's no way we can both be in this house together. <laughs> it's just not going to work. One of us is going to die. And really, you need to get that way. Are you with me? You ne people, ne Christians are too lax when it comes. Peter said, be sober, be vigilant, take it seriously. It does matter. That little dishonest act or whatever, don't do it. Say, well, nobody knows. God knows, the devil knows. He's walking about like a roaring lion trying to, to destroy and to hurt and to cause you to suffer. And so I called an animal expert and I said, we have squirrels in the walls of my house. And so he came out and and uh, I showed him where they were. I said, listen, man, I will tear up the carpet and tear the floors out of here. I want to get the squirrels. He said, no. He said, we don't need to do that. He said, let's go outside. And I went outside. And I said, we're going to kill a squirrel. I want to kill a squirrel. I want to kill. I want a squirrel head. I want to. I want squirrels dead. Wanted, no, not dead or alive, dead. I want them out of here, and I want them dead so they can't come back. Ever. He, and he said, no, let's go around the house, and let's find out where they got out. I said, what difference does it make where they got? I want to kill them. He says, no, we just need to find where they got in. I said, there's a big house. How are you going to tell where they got in? They didn't, I mean, so we walked around the house. 
And he goes, look at that. And he's looking up under this eave, and he said, see that mark, that, that stain? That's come from their fur. They're going in and out right there. And he said, if we don't shut that off, they're just going to keep coming. Do you know that's exactly what happens? Shut the door. Find out how the enemy's been taking advantage of you and shut it. It's not a mystery. It's not hard. It, it just takes determination. See, are you with me? I, I'm, 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 not, I'm definitely not trying to turn you into some introverted, you know, demon search, demon ghostbuster. Where there's a devil behind everything. No, but I'm telling you, I believe Christians are dealing with with torment in every area of life because they have been too soft on the devil. And we haven't taken Peter's word seriously. Well, are they demon possessed? No, they're just they're, they're But they're dealing with the effects of leaving doors open in their life. And the enemy is is causing <coughs> destruction. And they're trying to deal with the problem without dealing with the, the root, the door. You know, we we uh, we finally moved from that house. I swear I'd never get another wooden house <laughs> that an animal could eat. Now I have a stucco house. They don't like to eat stucco. And so anyway, we got another house and the front door has got an, a, a strange latch. And we went on a trip, my wife and I, for a week and the front door was open like all week, I guess. I don't know. The wind blew it open. So we got home and can I just tell you, nothing good happens when you leave a door open. In this world, if you leave the door open, something bad, not something good. Like, like when you leave the door open, it's not like some neighborhood cleaning crew is going to say, hey, let's go <laughs> clean that house. Or the local painter's not going to say, that door's open, let's go paint that house for them. <laughs> nothing good happens. Either you get a varmint or a, a pest, a rodent, uh, insects. In our case, we got home, it was winter, so there was no insects, but it was leaves all over the foyer. So we had to get rid of the leaves, shut the door. Why, how did we do that? Don't leave the door open. Does that make sense? Yes. Don't allow. Uh, uh, he comes in in so many different ways, but don't allow his, his devices to work in your life. As I said, you know, we can say, talk about an alcoholic or a drug addict, and we can obviously see their problem, but there are other people addicted to worry. Man, they'll worry about not being able to worry about something. <laughs> they think that's their job is to worry about something. And, and as we've got to just examine ourselves. Quit letting the devil push you around in any air be like jesus and say yeah he came but he has nothing in me and maybe he took advantage of you for a while maybe he made you lonely and sad and depressed or maybe he made you think thoughts of a suicide but let's call a stop to it let's say that's it no more no more i give no place to the devil when i guard myself he can't touch me that is so liberating to be when you can say that, you can cast out devils. You can walk into a town and the devil knows you're there because you know he is so afraid that you're going to find this out and that you're going to begin to walk in the authority that's yours. He wants to keep the church beat down and oppressed and tormented and worried and greedy and envious and covetous and angry and unforgiving. And, and we can say no to all of it. You don't have to pick one. <laughs> No, I'm not unforgiving, but I am a little bitter. <laughs> but I got greed way under control. I am not a greedy person. But don't cross me. <laughs> it runs in my family. I mean, we are Scottish or whatever. I don't know where that... <laughs> do not cross us. No, the same rules apply to everyone. And if he can't get in one way, he'll try to get in another. It's time to say, I'm closing every door. There's not going to be one. And we went over every square inch of that house where that squirrel got in. I hired two guys with ladders. And I said, you look at every square inch of this house. And if there's a hole bigger than that, you seal it up. We need that. How many of you know that would be good for us to do in the church? 
why we've got to be that mighty army not timid and not compromised and that's really what it is if you want to know how you open a door it's compromise and you have to be conscious to compromise you can't do that unconsciously are you with me no condemnation but a lot of responsibility you don't have to compromise don't compromise it costs too much it's literally making a deal with the devil and that compromise is what got us here the serpent said has God not said he couldn't just come take over the world he had to seduce Eve and Adam to do something to get something the cheap way to compromise to get what they wanted and it opened the door it still works the same way he's still using the same tactic can I can I read this to you this is this is lengthy and I'm not going to read it all but go to numbers 23 numbers 23 and this is a uh, the story of a prophet named Balaam and did, did I say that right ba uh, Balaam and 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 so I'll tell you the story just to get catch you up because you can see the way the devil works in the in Paul said we're not ignorant of his devices. Well, this is like a, an object lesson on the devices of the devil. So uh, this is a king of Moab Balak was afraid because Israel was taking the promised land and he was next and he was afraid they were going to come take his land. So he was a very superstitious religious guy. And so this king, uh, he didn't want to fight Israel. Uh, he called this prophet Balaam to come and curse them. <laughs> Isn't that something? He wanted to, he, he wanted to, this prophet to curse uh, the 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 uh, nation of God, uh, the people of God. And so Balaam, you know, that's the story of the donkey that spoke, and it was a very the the reason that there was so much conflict about him going. Uh, was he wanted to go God told him not to go but he wanted to he wanted to do this but he wasn't going to do it God finally allowed him to and then I'll, and, and, and so he he goes with with uh, Balak and they build these altars and so three times he tries to curse the armies of God and he said now I'm just telling you right now this is how prophecy works I can't say anything beyond the word of the Lord I'm going to have to say what God gives me to say and he says okay i'm paying you a lot of money for this i want to make it good it better be good so he tries to curse the armies of god and he ends up blessing them <laughs> and he says man this is a hard job for a prophet i i i i'm i'm i can't curse what god has blessed the devil says that about you every day he can't curse what god has blessed so what they do? They tried it again. So let's go over on this side and let's build the altars and try it again. And so they do it again, and uh, it just gets worse. Uh, in in Numbers uh, twenty three and verse eight, he says, "He says, How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? How shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced?" And then he went on to say in verse ten, "Who can count the dust of Jacob?" Or number one-fourth of Israel. Let me die the death of the righteous. And let my end be like his. He's just been paid a fortune to curse these people. And he's just blessing their socks off. Because you can't. When it comes to God. And the blessing of God. And the people of God. They're, you're blessed. You don't have to be afraid of witch doctors. And warlocks. And curses. And voodoo. And, and, and seances. And m demons. And devils. You don't have to be afraid of those things. They cannot touch you. They can't curse you. They can't come on you. You have authority over those things. And so they tried it again. And again. He says behold I've, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. It must be frustrating to be the devil. <laughs> and then he did it a third time. And then a fourth time he says, let me tell you what's going to happen uh, in your latter end. And it wasn't good. And Balak said, y your God has kept you from honor. Your God has kept you. I was going to really bless you and take good care of you. But you forfeited your right. And so what happened next is one of the worst things 
acts of betrayal and treason in the Bible. And so Balaam's name was mentioned in the New Testament by the prophets or uh, by the apostle and by Jesus himself. Because Balaam said this. He said, I can't curse the armies of God. I've tried and I can't do it. But I'll tell you what you do. Seduce them. You want to destroy them, seduce them. Isn't that vile? Here's a guy who had this information and he used his knowledge of how God operates to destroy the people of God. And they fell for it. In, in Numbers 25, verse 1, Now Israel remained in, a, in the Achaia grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. And they invited the people to, sacrifice, to the sacrifices of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal. And the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. They didn't, they, they, they didn't realize how blessed they were. And they didn't realize that what they were doing, it wasn't just a, an occasion to sin or to enjoy the, you know, a different uh, religion. Different. They were betraying their God. They were opening a door to the devil that he couldn't open himself. So rather than them being overwhelmed by the power of an enemy force, they just opened the door and said, come on in and take advantage of us. And he did. And that's what Christians do when they open the door. He can't come in without you letting, letting him. Balaam knew this. And so in Revelation, uh, Jesus said this. And man, <clears throat> it's, it's just... The summary in the Younger's Bible Dictionary says Balaam taught Balak to corrupt the people who could not be cursed by seducing them to marry Moabite women and commit spiritual adultery. In Revelation 2, this is however many thousands of years later, thousand years later, Jesus is talking to John and he, the resurrected Christ, uses the name of Balaam. That's how much it angered him. He said, I have a few, this is Revelation 2, 14. I have a few things against you because you have, uh, you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel and to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit spiritual immorality. And it, it angered the Lord then and, uh, and, and thousands and thousands of them died in a plague because of this and it was all unnecessary uh, they opened the door they allowed this to happen to their nation satan couldn't come over them come on them and overtake them but he seduced them and they fell for it don't fall for it amen, amen. and I, i've been quoted this this morning i believe uh, it's in second timothy three uh, six it says they they are led away by various lusts v led away by various lusts you know when satan came to jesus he tried to tempt him he 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 attempted to seduce him and he was trying to get him to compromise for things that hopefully would mean something to jesus he says how about bread would you would you compromise for bread aren't you hungry and he says no man shall not live by bread alone he says well then throw yourself down off the temple and be famous. Would you corrupt yourself, compromise yourself for fame? And he goes, no. And then he says, look, I'll give you the whole world. That's what you came for. Didn't you come for the world? I'll give it to you. It's been given to me and I'll share it with you. You just worship me. Let's join together and we'll do this. And Jesus, of course, he refused. Uh, the point is this. If you have a price, the devil will pay it. For Jesus to be able to say the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me means there was no price that he was willing to sell out for. None. Let us follow Jesus in that, in that attitude. See, there's nothing. There's no way. Life's too short. There's too much to do. There's people that need to be set free. You need to be free. You... You, you need to declare war 
on depression and sadness. That's the devil bullying you. Are you with me today? Declare war on, on selfishness and greed. If you have unforgiveness, find it. Get rid of it. Bitterness. Say, I'm not going, I, I can't afford to live my life with this root of bitterness. Uh, and, and if you do have that for someone and you say, well, you don't know what they've done to me. You don't know how bad it's been. Listen, here's the way you can deal with that. Pray for them. Pray for them until the bitterness dissolves because it will. Love is greater than hate. And when you begin to express love, maybe you've never done that. And it may be difficult at first. That's, that's good. <laughs> that's good. If it's hard to pray for someone, you know you got a problem. <laughs> Keep doing it till it's not hard anymore. And then you'll you realize how free you'll be. I'm telling you, there, there, we, we need to be sober and be vigilant and examine our lives like never before. Look for areas of your life where you ha uh, have allowed persistent, willful disobedience. Is that clear enough? Yeah. I got another way to say it, but 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 notice this story because I think it it perfectly illustrates being led away by various lusts. The prodigal son, which we heard about a little bit this morning, the prodigal son was led away by various lusts, wasn't he? And, and look what happened to him. He was in a position of power. He was the son, the heir. He was in a rich estate. He was going to inherit everything. And, and, and he had his father's name. He had all the, the trappings that go with. It was like part of the royal family. Here he is. And what does he do? He marries and goes to America. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I watched too much Netflix. Uh, <laughs> Wow, that didn't come out right. <laughs> so so he he had every reason to stay and enjoy what he'd been born into, what he had, what was his birthright, and yet he he was led away. He says, "Father, I want my money. I want my inheritance, and I want to go do my thing." And he did. He went out and uh, and there was a severe famine. Uh, I'm a first world preacher and I, I'm going to recognize that there was a severe famine in the land and he began to be in want and he ended up in a pig pen and he and he was he was <laughs> actually coveting the pig slop. He wanted to eat the food the pigs were eating and then he came to himself. But let me ask you this. How did a person at that level and that p place of 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 royalty and authority, how did he end up? In the pig pen, did the father say, fine, if you're not going to live here, I'm sending you straight to the pig pen till you learn your lesson. Is that what the father said? Did the father uh, maybe hire the mafia to to rob him and put him in a pig pen till he learned his lesson? No, the father's love never changed. And it would be true to say that the father loved the son before, during and after his wayward living. But that son suffered because he was led away by various lusts. So although the father didn't put him in the pig pen and the father still loved him, he still got to go and live in the pig pen. I don't want to live in the pig pen. I don't want to be in the pig pen saying, yes, but God loves me and grace is freely given. I don't want to end up in the pig pen. And do you know that to get out of the pig pen, he didn't need a month of deliverance preaching and repenting and purgatory and penance and punishment and learning le lessons and rehearsing the past. He just decided, I've had enough of this way of life. And no one could stop him from going back to Father's house because we have the authority. Give no place to the devil. And if you did, you can take it back. You don't need permission. You don't need to wait. You don't need help. Shut that door. With violence. Determination. Enjoy your freedom. And, and really this is the key. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this. Because I, I want us to, to act on this tonight. How many of you would like to do that? I'm telling you there is just. There is such freedom. In just examining ourselves, judging ourselves, shutting every door, 
and allowing the Holy Spirit to just draw near. Uh, there, there's an authority that you that you can walk in and enjoy that won't come any other way. But here it is in in first John five uh, one verse five. This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness. So really, that's what we're talking about is light and darkness. And, and if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That verse describes a person who has every door shut. That verse. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, that's the same as first John five eighteen, where we sin not. And we keep ourselves, we guard ourselves, and the wicked one touches us not. It's, very, it's the same principle. That's what walking in the light is. It's not hard to walk in the light. It's not hard to discern what light is. And I, that's what, I want to make this very simple and clear because I don't want people to go on a spiritual witch hunt and think that I got doors open and I got devils oppressing me and whatever. Forget that. Listen, walk in the light. In other words, get out of the darkness. If there's something that you know that is wrong, that, that is compromised in your life, stop it. Shut it off. Repent of it. Close the door. Don't walk in the darkness. Walk in the light. And do you know the light is different for different people? There, there are Christians that for them, they don't have all the revelation you have. You're not responsible to walk in someone else's light. Just your light. You ever, you know, uh, you hear these testimonies about these new believers coming up to testify and they cuss, you know, in church and, and the, the saints are like, <gasps> did they really say that? See, is it wrong to cuss? Yeah, it's wrong to cuss. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be cussing. That's not what we expect Christians to do. So will you go to hell for cuss? No, but, but we clean up our language. And you hear someone do that that's newly born again. And you know, you don't have to condemn them. You don't have to correct them. You don't have to come down on them. They'll get light. And they'll walk out of it just like you did. That's walking in the light. Now, they're walking in all the light they have. They don't have as much light. But give them time. They will. And if we'll do that as a practice, walk in the light we have. When you get a revelation on a certain subject, walk in the light of that. Walk in that revelation. Be a doer of that word. And I'm telling you, the, the wicked one cannot touch you. Isn't that a powerful thought? I mean, in real practice, he cannot touch you. And the, whole pro the, 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 the real purpose of this message is I see Christians being bullied by the devil. They want help. They want you to fix it. They want deliverance, you know, from from the side effects. And they don't realize, you know, they're just opening the door. Just shut the door. Yeah, but I just want to kill the squirrel. Well, you need to find out where he got in and shut it. And then you won't ever. Listen, I don't, I've never had a squirrel problem after that. I think they told their neighbors and they said, do not go in that house. <laughs> don't go in that house. You may die if you go in. It's not worth it. They don't even have good food in there. Don't go in there. Get a reputation. Amen. Would you stand with me and, and could we have a little bit of music? I, I'd like to, to do this. And, and anything can be taken to the extreme. And I'm sure you had this, these deliverance things that came through here. We had them in, a, in America. But, uh, so we're not looking for any manifestation or anything like that. We just, we just want to walk in the light. Shut the door. By an act of our own will. And if you think about it, if, if a person can come forward and confess Jesus as Lord of their life and be completely born again, it's not a big thing for a Christian to say, I shut that door, I shut this door, I'm, I'm going to turn away from this and never do it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
So are we talking about like like big major things like you know, gambling addiction or drug addiction? No, it's it's according to your own light that you walk in. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I I'm telling you, I've seen people that are addicted to worry, and it's a real problem. I mean, it they need to be they need to face that thing and say I'm not doing this anymore. And if they won't do it, I can't do it for them. Hallelujah. Loneliness can just beat up Christians. Did you know you can be alone without accepting loneliness? But if you don't know that, if you have never had that, te- you know what? You can do it. You're the gatekeeper of your own mind, your own home. Kick loneliness out. Say, you're not coming back here. Yes, but you're alone. Yeah, but Jesus is here. God, God, I, I get in my prayer room and I'm so alone. And, and I was laughing one day about how full it is in there. Just it's, I'm alone, but it's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And He can't get all the way in. The Holy Ghost, He's, he's just part way in. That room's full. And I'm all by myself. Get rid of loneliness. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you bow your heads? Father, as the psalmist said, search me and know me. Try my heart and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Help me judge myself in my thoughts, in my words, in my actions. Guard myself. Keep myself. And the wicked one can't touch me. What a powerful statement to make. To know that, to live that, to be that. Yeah, I know there are some in this room that have heard this voice say, it's not going to matter. You're not hurting anyone. It's okay. Doesn't that sound like the seduction in the garden? The seduction of Balaam through Balak. Go ahead. It's not going to hurt. No one's going to know. Don't think that way. Don't act that way. You're opening a door that only you can open. Why? Why do that? Shut that door right now. Say, that's it. No more. No more envy. And if you read through Galatians, it's all the lust of the flesh all those different areas it's not limited to one area with those things they just produce death when you sow the storms we create for ourselves let's stop it we made it we can stop it in Jesus name come up to a higher level Come up to a higher standard. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Man, I've heard that so many times I'm tired of hearing it. Well, I'm not hurting anyone else. I'm not hurting anyone but myself. Well, are you not someone? Don't have any value in yourself? You want to ruin your life? Think more highly than that. God loves you. God wants you to experience the fullness of life, the abundance that He has for life, and victory over the devil. We undermine our own authority sometimes, and and that's what doesn't work for us. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, this is a word for mature believers, obviously. Obviously. But that's who we are. I wouldn't say this to a, a, a new convert. I mean, they, they've already embraced God and they're walking in the light they have. But for us who've lived for God for years, we've been attacked and approached with schemes and strategies. We've been around. And if anything like that worked in your life, you need to decide right now it's not going to work anymore. I'm not falling for that. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Say, thank you, Jesus, for defeating 
the enemy for me. I accept what you did and I apply it to my life. I choose to walk in the light, not darkness. I will not persist in willful disobedience. I will not knowingly compromise your word in my life. I shut every door. I remove every entrance. I stand on the word of God and in the authority of that word. I say with John, I'm born of God. I do not habitually sin. I don't make sin in practice. I keep myself. I guard myself. And the wicked one cannot, will not touch me in Jesus' name. I have authority in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Satan, take up your weapons and flee in Jesus' name. I am submitted to God, fully submitted, entirely submitted. I resist the devil, and he flees from me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It really does work. It's not a magic formula. It's just, it's just making choices. And it, and it changes life. We are the free ones. Free. Oh, my heart goes out to the church. How many Christians today are suffering with illness, with disease, with things in their bodies and in their minds? They're on medication for mental and physical ailments. And they left the door open somewhere because they thought it doesn't matter. It's okay. No one knows. I'm not hurting anyone. It's not illegal. Yeah, but does it open an, uh, an area for the devil? Those, you know, Peter was not kidding. It wasn't just a suggestion. He said, be sober. Be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, is walking about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for weakness. He's looking for a way in. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. That's, that's aggressive. That's proactive. Resist steadfast. That's what we've done tonight. Resist steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same uh, sufferings are accomplished by your brethren. In other words, we're all dealing with the same issue. The same devil. Same tactics. So you're not especially beat up on. You're not. It's not. You're. You're not special in that regard. We're all dealing with the same thing, and we all must resist steadfast in the faith. It's not time to get lax. It's time to rise up. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Mm. Everybody say this. Say I'm free. I'm free. I'm free in my mind, I'm free in my body, I'm free with my words, free in my heart, because whom the Son has set free it is free indeed, free indeed, hallelujah, 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 amen, amen, well, I'm a, we're going to do some more tomorrow, but I think we've done all we need to do tonight, amen, amen, pastor, oh, uh, no, it's Richard. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, man. Love you, man. I forgive you. <laughs> See? It's easy. I forgive you See? for what I, you're I, going to do. I forgave you already. <laughs> okay. So we're forgiven. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you to uh, Brother Greg. Praise God. <laughs>